if you want to file for patent, it takes a shit ton of money <laughs> and you have to know what the hell you're doing, uh, which means you have to hire a lawyer. If you're, most inventors don't know how to file for a patent, I mean, maybe you want to try Inventelp or something like that, the George Foreman commercials and stuff like that. I would probably stay away from that. You need a patent lawyer. That shit costs a ton of money because they do a lot of research to see like what exists out there. And it's really hard for them to see because there's thousands of patents filed for every week in the United States from inventors and, and people in the United States and, you know, inventors from outside of the United States. What happens is you file, let's say in the U.S., your wrapper goes to uh, the United States Patent and Trademark Office and they, um, they basically, there's a lawyer there and these lawyers are, uh, <clears throat> you know, familiar with a certain area um, and they search, they examine all the patents that you may, be, you may infringe upon and determine whether uh, your idea is, is patentable. Um, so for every allowance, which means patent awarded, there's 20 rejections. So again, you spend 20 grand, 15 grand on a patent lawyer to draw up a wrapper and they miss something and then the patent examiner sees it, you, you've lost 20 Gs uh, and, and you've also made your idea public domain, uh, whatever. Um, but again, like you have to have money to do this and you have to have knowledge of the system to do it. So a lot of times what happens is that independent inventors will, if they're smart, share their idea with a large company and make them sign a non-disclosure, non-compete agreement, which means that they, they won't you know, make a competing product using the same idea unless they buy it from you. And largely the history of innovation in the United States is these large um, companies, you know, and quote unquote inventors like Edison who have a lot of capital, a lot of knowledge, who are, sh you know, obviously shown things by independent inv inventors, and then they go and patent that shit, okay? Uh, so oftentimes you, you, you want to sell it. That's, that tends to be the thing because owning a patent, a patent on an idea is great, but if you cannot actually, you know, work out the cross-licensing agreements with other companies to actually manufacture it in a product or say it's just an invention straight up, it's an idea that, that it applies to one specific invention that doesn't infringe on other people's patents, uh, you know, you, you're going to have to figure out how to make that shit, <laughs> how to get it made, how to get it mass, mass produced, um, have the advanced capital to do that, and then how do you get it to retail? How do you get a distribution network lined up that can get it to actual retailers? So uh, uh, again, like I said, oftentimes inventors will get a patent and sell it. And if you watch Shark Tank at all, uh, which I don't really watch it a lot, a lot of these people show inventions and you know, Mark Cuban and the people will ask like, do you have a patent on it? No, oh. You know, like they're more into people who have patents on it because it's already gone through the, the process. It's, it, it, they know they have a, a you know, whatever, 20 year monopoly on that and they're, they're, they're good. If you put patent pending on, let's say you apply for a patent, you think you're gonna get it, you make the friggin' product that has the patented idea in it. You put patent pending on it as like a fair notice to anybody to say like, yo, chill out. Like I'm working on a patent for this. Don't make your own shit. You know, it's like kind of like a, a warning that you, that you filed. Okay. So again, like I said, this costs some fucking money. Uh, in the United States, it's five grand to 20 grand. And this is like a, a an average, um, if you want to file for a PCT patent, which is uh, a patent that will look to, you know, an application that will look to file in 184 countries, and then you got to nationalize it in, in those countries, which means actually file it there. This could cost a hundred grand for a worldwide patent. Okay. And it typically takes uh, two and a half years to file. <laughs> so like you better be able to like make something spend the money on research and development and be able to sit there for a hot minute and wait for your shit to get, get patented. Okay. Um, it costs actually not a ton of money to get the patent filed. It's the, the lawyer fees that make up like most of the 20 large, 
Uh, but you pay for a utility patent, $340, uh, $330, and then you have a $540 fee and then a $220 examination fee. So like a $800 in fees from the pa patent and trademark office. Um, you know, uh, so I don't know, like, and then once, if you do get a paint, pa a patent, <laughs> a patent, uh, you have to pay maintenance fees of like a grand every three years. So there's some fees associated with the actual patent and patenting process itself. But most of the cost goes into research and development. A lot, all tons of money can go into research and development, but then also having a patent lawyer that you pay to, to actually come up with your wrapper and file. Okay. You can get a provisional patent, which lasts for a year, um, just to protect an idea that's like a patent pending, and a non-provisional you can apply for, which is a full, a full-blown, you know, patent that lasts for 20 years. 97% um, of patents make less money than they cost to obtain, meaning that you, you know, you spend 20 grand to patent something and you, you'll never recoup your investment. You'll make five grand back on it. It's just, it's just so many things, you know, that are patentable are not marketable. So yeah, your invention may be patentable, but there's no fucking market for it. It just doesn't exist. Or the idea is patentable. It just costs way too much to produce your idea in a way that it's actually consumable uh, to people. Lawsuits are hella expensive, uh, a million bucks. You know, it's one, you know, it's like 10% uh, is for, you know, of that is like, you know, it's 10 to, you know, $100,000, $150,000 for a copyright lawsuit, but usually around a million bucks. Now, that's if patents have a high value to them. The lower the value, the, le the less cost of, of, of the patent. But the average for like a technology that could, could make you a million and a half to $25 million in the market could cost you a million dollars um, to fight for. This is a little bit dated, but you can kind of see, you know, uh, some information on who's granted the most patents. So you have IBM, Samsung, Canon, uh, Google, you know, and these are, these are patents in the United States, but we're talking like, you know, thousands of patents, thousands of patents they're being, um, you know, they're being granted per year. It's pretty freaking crazy. And you can also see too, like that patent lawsuits have been going up insanely uh, since the nineties. So, you know, under 2000 in the mid nineties to upwards of, you know, six, 7,000 in the mid 2000, uh, 20 teens, you know, so um, the amount of lawsuits are going up and this, the, that's largely due to the fact that software is patentable. So it's, and software does everything. So everybody's infringing on everybody's patent when it comes to software. In the United States, the patent system is a first to file system. And it's like this in the rest of the world, okay? This was different in the United States before 2013 where it was first to invent. So let me tell you what a first to file is, okay? Let's say there's two competing uh, inventors. I'll say Andre, I'm one, and Alfie, my son, is one. We're competing inventors. I invent something before my son does. However, my son is smarter than me. My son has more economic capital. He has better connections and a better patent lawyer. And my son files for a patent on the same patentable idea. My son would be awarded for that because he filed before me. Okay, let's go into a DeLorean flux capacitator patented time machine and go back to 2010. In the same situation where I invent something first but file for a patent later, right, um, I would be awarded patent because I invented it first, okay? But the United States and the rest of the world is a first to file, first to file. So whoever files first will be granted the patent if it's patentable. So if you have two people that have the same patentable idea and one files months before the other one, um, you'll be awarded the patent. It has nothing to do with when you invented it, uh, but it has to do with when you filed. All right, who would like to get drunk? 
We're going to watch A Drunk History on Edison versus Tesla. Uh, I just want to do this as a little break, you know, like a little, just a little break from Andre yabbling and dabbling, have a little bit of a laugh. Again, it's Duncan Trussell who does it, uh, which is pretty funny. Uh, there's a new movie out called uh, The Current Wars, which I, I want to torrent really bad, but it's about Edison uh, versus um, Tesla. So um, uh, Edison, who was a direct current, he had all the patents and in, in inf infrastructure for direct current, and Tesla, who came up with alternating current, um, which is what we use now. We don't use DC anymore. We use AC. Um, and uh, you know, uh, Edison fought against it because he had all the infrastructure and patents for DC. And so we'll see this kind of in, you know, a drunk history uh, style. Uh, but, uh, you know, Tesla was dope. You know, he, he came up with, you know, they're going to go over this, a way to harness energy for free from the atmosphere. And he was, because of the society at the time, you know, in the early 20th century, which was way patent focused like copyrights didn't really matter that much then it was everybody's like trying to patent stuff and was suing the shit out of one another for patent infringement uh you know tesla had these ideas where you know and this was also as things like were being privatized electricity the grid was becoming privatized uh water was becoming you know owning every service public service was becoming privatized and you know so he was kind of outcasted for his ideas but his ideas were like insane. Like he figured, he figured out like wireless technology way before radio technology, all these things. So he's a pretty interesting uh, person. And there's no, no wonder, you know, there, there is, there's literally a company named Tesla. It's named after Nikola Tesla, uh, uh, Wikipedia him, you know, look him up, but watch this drunk history. Okay. And uh, we'll get back. We don't really need to talk about it, but you'll kind of, you kind of see why I hate Edison and you know, um, the reason why, too, you know, Edison is labeled as a great American inventor is literally because he had his name put on everything, his name branded everything, and he patented everything. So you have these, little, these literal documents that list him as the inventor. And, uh, you know, at his company, you know, he didn't allow his machinists and engineers to be listed on patents for the most part. He always had himself listed on, on the patents as, as inventor. So he's sort of, in history, known as a great American inventor, but actually he was just kind of a greedy uh, capitalist who had a, a good team of people that worked for him, uh, whose ideas he claimed as his own and also stole ideas from uh, other independent inventors. But, you know, uh, people will still love him, right, demon? <laughs> remember the other the other drunk history all right check this out press play and we'll be back 